When the Casio GA2100 was released in 2019, it quickly became popular not only with G-Shock aficionados, but with the wider watch community as a whole. It has the resin case and rugged look G-Shock is known for, but its octagonal sides and round dial also has the shape reminiscent of a Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, leading the watch world to dub this model the Casio. In 2022, they updated the lineup with the new GAB2100, which brings a few much requested features to the watch in five different color variants. Let's have a closer look at this C9A yellow variant, go over its features and functions, and talk about if it's a worthy upgrade to its predecessor. Welcome to Sneaky Pete's Product Reviews. The Casio G-Shock GA-B2100 shares the same signature octangular case design with the GA2100, and it measures in at 45.4 millimeters at its widest point. It is ever so slightly taller at 11.9 millimeters, adding an extra 0.1 millimeters with this new design. With that extra 0.1 millimeters, they also added an extra gram to the overall weight, but this thing is still a super light 52 grams, including the strap. Being on the smaller side of G-Shocks, the case sits comfortably on my wrist, even at a higher wrist position on my dominant hand. I don't find it really gets in the way when I'm bending my wrist and moving about, except for during certain activities at the gym, for example. Even if your wrists are a little bit on the smaller side, I don't think this is going to overwhelm your wrist. The strap is made from the same resin as the case, and it is a very comfortable watch to wear all day long. It has these raised ridges on the strap that are designed to allow for some airflow, and they also help to lock the strap securely in place. On the 8-inch adjustable strap, it has black accents for the clasp and strap lock, rather than being pure yellow. I really like this subtle design choice, I think it looks much better than if they went all yellow. If your wrist is not wide enough to fully press the strap against the case, you're going to see this small gap between the band and the case. This happens when the strap gets pulled down a bit instead of sitting flush, and I imagine you're going to notice this more on a bright strap as compared to a dark one. The Quartz 5689 module is incredibly accurate, this is plus or minus 15 seconds per month accuracy, but the new GAB2100 also features Bluetooth, meaning it will automatically sync the time multiple times a day from your smartphone via the Casio Watches app. Bluetooth is a bit polarizing in the watch space, some people like everything to be on the watch itself, while others feel Bluetooth is a reasonable thing to add and makes life a lot easier. I tend to fall on the second half of that list myself, and I like how this keeps perfect accuracy automatically. While you can of course set the functions on the watch itself, you can also set up every aspect of this watch and more using the app. You can set your alarms, the length of the light afterglow, time and duration, 12 or 24 hour time, everything. The app will also let you set reminders, which will display the reminder text on the watch itself when it's in that setting, and the reminder icon will flash on the day the reminder is set as well. My overall favorite thing that Bluetooth offers though is the phone finder feature. This is the primary thing I miss about my Apple Watch, it's super convenient to ping your phone from your watch to locate it. When you do pair your watch with the app though, you can use this exact same feature on your GAB2100, and if that's not reason enough for the app, I don't know what is. I love the classic look and shape of this watch. It's super durable, but it doesn't look too extreme. I would say it's more fashion forward than most G-Shock watches. I personally think the yellow model really stands out in this collection, and they also charge slightly more money for it for some reason. Even though it's fashionable, this is a G-Shock in every sense of the word, with the rugged carbon core structure to handle the biggest of shocks and 200 meter water resistance. It has mineral crystal covering the dial, which will get protection from the raised ridge surrounding the case. One of the main reasons I chose the yellow color was the legibility of the dial. My BA2100 has the negative display, and while I love it in the daylight, I find it hard to read in anything less than ideal conditions. This display, on the other hand, is as clear as the lineup allows. It has large, clearly marked hour indexes, and the subdial features a yellow accented hand pointing to either the mode or to your battery level. Unlike the previous generation, the subdial no longer displays the day of the week, but you can still display the day of the week in the digital display by pressing the adjust button. The digital display features indicators to quickly communicate if modes are turned on or off, it has bar style numbers on the top display, and a much higher pixel density dot display on the bottom. They have also swapped the info and seconds position on this new model, with the seconds now showing on the upper display. The light is fantastic and easy to read on this new model. You get both a backlit digital display, as well as a super bright LED which easily illuminates the whole dial. Finally, the new GAB2100 adds tough solar to the equation. This alone will be a reason to upgrade for many people, as this means you no longer have to worry about changing out your battery or running out of a charge, as long as you don't keep this thing in the dark for months at a time. 
Compared to my other tough solar model where the solar panel is apparent, you really can't see exactly where the tough solar lives on this dial. At the corners of the watch, you find four metal pushers to control everything. Let's have a closer look at the module itself and all the features that it offers. Looking at those four buttons, we have adjust, light, mode, and start, and they call those buttons A, B, C, and D. Have the hour hand, the minute hand, and then they call this one the mode hand, and this is referred to as the LCD display. On the home screen here, if the hands are blocking your LCD display, while you're pressing B, press the C button. So press that. You're gonna see the hands move out of the way. And then down at the bottom, you're gonna see hand flash, indicating that that's not the time, it just has the hands out of the way. You can do this in any mode, but if you switch to a different mode, it's going to set the hands back, and then you're gonna to have to go ahead and move those hands again if you want them out of the way. Pressing the light buttons, obviously you're gonna turn the light on there. And when you press the start button here, when you are synced to your phone, simply press that one time, and that's gonna go ahead and do a sync of the time and pull the time from your phone, giving you a completely accurate time. The second thing that this button do, that's how you initiate your phone finder. So I'm gonna hold that, and you're probably gonna hear this on the recording. There we go, yeah, that's quite loud. Press any button to stop that. Press button, automatically stops that. And on the sub dial, you saw that when it was connected to Bluetooth, and now it's back to telling me the battery level. And the mode button is how you're gonna switch in between modes, and as you press that, you're gonna notice the sub dial, that's gonna tell you what mode you're in. As we press the adjust button, that's gonna change what's displayed in that LCD. Right now it's showing us our date, which is Saturday. This is the digital time here. If you don't like the analog, that'll give you the digital time. This is my reminder because I'm synced with the smartphone. I have a birthday reminder in there and I have the message happy birthday and your reminder will blink when it's on the day your reminder is going to trigger. This is going to show you the day in month and day. You can also change this to day and month if you prefer and then back to Saturday. As I mentioned, you can use the app and set everything up, but if you do want to set it up from the watch itself, hold that adjust button. First thing you're going to do is set your home time. I'm in Vancouver, of course, so mine's in the home time. But you can just press either the light or the start button to move in between different time zones to switch. Now, as you saw, mine said Vancouver, but when I select between cities, you actually don't see Vancouver. But the thing is, you can select your home city using the app. So if your city isn't on here, there's a good chance it's gonna be in the app, but I'm gonna leave mine at LA as it's the same time zone. And when you're done setting, press adjust. But if you wanna continue setting up, press mode to switch between the different modes. Right now, daylight savings time. If you want that on, off, or auto, I'm gonna go auto. Next is you can set the time as well. I set the time to get that hands out of the way so I can show you the LCD dial a little bit. Press mode to switch in between the different settings. Select your year, the month, the date. If you want 12 hour or of course you can use 24 hour mode. I much prefer 12 hour myself. Month, day or do you want the day in the month? Nice option to have. Do you want the language in English, Spanish, French? German, Italian, Russian, back to English. Do you want the key tone off or on? I like having mine on rather than muted. The light duration. Do you want the afterglow for three seconds or 1.5 seconds? Three seconds, you gotta go with three seconds. Just gives you a little more time to look at things. And then the time itself. Do you want the receive on or off from your phone? I like to have mine on as this thing syncs multiple times a day. So it keeps it to incredibly accurate time. And then the power saving mode. Do you want that on or off? This has two different levels of power saving mode, both designed to extend your battery life. I definitely keep mine on. And then you can see we're back to the same settings here. So now I'm gonna go adjust and that's gonna lock in our settings and then we're gonna be ready to go. The only other thing I would advise doing at this point is connecting to your watch, enable that app, at least give it a try. You might not like it, but you should at least enable it so you can try out those features. Now let's show you the modes in more detail here. We're gonna to go to the world time. And on this, you just have one world time programmed in here, just one world time zone. You can still scroll through them, of course, if you want, but it doesn't give you five memory spaces, for example. And this does have a time swap mode. So if I wanna swap my current time for another time zone, if I'm traveling or something, I just select that time zone here and then press the A and the B button at the same time and that's going to swap the timeout for your current time zone. So all your alarms and everything like that are still going to be correct. The next mode is going to be stopwatch. And this is a three function stopwatch. The first thing you can measure is simply elapsed time. Gonna start it. As you see, it does the sub seconds and then the full seconds down below. And if you go for over an hour, this will change. 
then at any time I can just stop that and then reset it by pressing this button. The next mode is split time, and split time is the time elapsed from the start up to any point along the course of an event. If you want to go into the split time, you press the A button, the adjust button, you either get lap or you get split. And then to measure the split time, simply go ahead and start it. Whenever it is time to measure that split, press the D button. You can go ahead and record that time for the split. It's going to be five seconds, 20 subseconds in this case. And then you can see after displaying the split, it just goes ahead and restarts that. You can stop that and then reset it. And then the last mode is going to be your lap timer. Going to go ahead and put that in lap mode now. Then you can start that. And then when the lap time is up, press that A button. That's going to be number one lap, as you can see. And then when we want to do another lap, we're going to press that A button again. That's going to give us our number two lap time there. Then a really quick lap here. So you see, and that's gonna keep track of all those laps until I stop the stopwatch and then go ahead and reset that. The next mode is gonna be our countdown timer. And I was really surprised to learn this is only a 60 minute countdown timer. You cannot do longer than an hour on this one, which definitely doesn't make it a little bit easier, I don't think. But if you wanna change it, hold the adjust button. You can press this up or down, use either button here to change that. You can also hold it and that's gonna make it go faster. And if you do want to switch to the seconds, press mode so you can adjust the seconds. When you get your time there, press adjust again. And if you want to start that, go ahead and press start. As you notice, the hands automatically move out of the way as soon as you go to adjust something. So you don't have to worry about adjusting something and having the hands obscuring the display. I'm going to go ahead and reset that, go to the final mode, and that's going to be the alarm mode. This gives you five different alarms that you can set here. So you see I move between them, one, two, three, four alarm number five, and then this is also where you set the hourly time signal. If you want that on or off, I love having mine on for sure. And as you see, that's going to change the little signal display. Right there is going to come off or on depending on that. Whenever I'm done, press mode, go back to timekeeping mode. And as you can see, the sub dial is going to go ahead and point to your battery level. And that's what it's going to monitor when you're in the timekeeping mode. The new Casio GA-B2100 is a fantastic upgrade to an already great watch. The addition of Tough Solar adds a lot of value for me, and I really appreciate the addition of Bluetooth, as I find the watch much easier not only to initially set up, but also to change things quickly when using the app as compared to doing it directly on the watch. The legibility is excellent on this dial, and I really don't miss the date subdial, as I much prefer the amount of information you get on this new subdial instead, and frankly, I like to watch the hands move as I press the mode button. Though I haven't seen them in person, I would take a look at a lot of pictures and videos before I chose the negative display option myself, as I find the legibility far inferior on those models with this reasonably small digital display. The case has a nice presence on the wrist without being overly large, and the band is super comfortable, giving you all day wear when combined with its lightweight. If you're looking for an analog digital hybrid G-Shock that sits more on the fashionable side, the GAB2100 is a fantastic choice. I really want to see them add a proper 24 hour timer on here, and I don't love this little gap on the band, but overall I'm really happy with this update, and this new yellow beauty will definitely find a place into my regular rotation. Thanks so much for watching. Please check the description where you can find links to find more information, and we'll see you soon with another review.